Hi. Oh, okay, the mic works. Uh, my name is Jean Baptiste. Uh, I'm French. Uh, no one is perfect. Um, <laughs> and we're going to talk about something a bit different than usual. Uh, we are going to talk about VLC. Um, so I'm a developer. Um, I've always been a developer in my life. I wanted to do that since I was very young. Um, and I'm working on VideoLand, whose only goal is that you have a cone, traffic cone in your house. Um, so far, it doesn't work so much, but you all have your, this small cone in your computer, so almost at there. It's a very weird story, uh, a story that started at the Ecole Centrale Paris, uh, which is a university that you don't know and you shouldn't know about. Um, in, in, in Paris, um, it's not even Paris, it's 25 kilometers south of Paris, and it's a story of how a, a group of students who were just in an engineering school managed to get a product that is bigger than the school. Um, it's a very weird story, because in 1993, they wanted to play video games uh, online, right? Um, and they were using a, 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 a network called Token Ring. Who knows Token Ring here? Wow, okay. Um, so there is a few oldies around, but for, for the others, so Token Ring was a 1980s technology by IBM, where basically you, your network was just like one big ring, and when you wanted to talk on it, you would just open the ring, put yourself on the ring, and then take your packet and go around. Which was okay to, to go and watch some emails, but it has a problem, is that the more people you have, the higher latency, because everyone is opening all the packets and check, oh, is the packet for me? No. So it worked fine. But they wanted to play Doom, right, online. And what happens if you have a high latency when you play FPS? Well, you die. Um, so they went to see the university and said, well, we need a new network to work. Um, of course, the, the university knew it was completely bullshit. Um, and um, so the students went. Uh, and because the students were the one managing the network, they went to see other people who were able to give money for that. And some people said, OK. If you're able to stream video um, from your satellite, and instead of buying 2,000 satellite dishes and 2,000 satellite decoders, just buy a big one and stream that to your network, we buy you a new network. Of course, for you it's obvious, but we are 1993, 1994, it's like 12 years before YouTube, and streaming MPEG-2 video live was impossible, right? So your faster computer was a 40, 486DX at 33 megahertz and a Pentium 60 if you were very, and it was impossible, right? But they wanted to play video games. So they said, okay, deal. And that's how they built this project whose name was Network 2000. Of course, we were in 1994, everything was called 2000. Um, and it became later video on a LAN. So that's how we got video LAN. Uh, the, 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 the project worked. There was an amazing demo. The demo was on a very big machine with 64 megabytes of RAM. Um, and of course, the demo crashed after 40 seconds, right? So the demo was 35 seconds. Um, and everyone was happy, they paid. And they'd say, well, you know, maybe other people, other universities have the same need. Um, and that's how they restarted the project in order to use that everywhere. The project was done for, um, to be open source, but it took them three years to get the university to allow to move that to open source. One of the, pro one of the software of the project, and I mean really one, was VideoLAN client, which became VLC. But there is a lot of other projects that are done by VideoLAN, the nonprofit, uh, like Mozilla has Firefox and Thunderbird. VideoLAN has a lot of them, and a lot of them you use every day. Almost every video you watch online is encoded by X264, the encoder that was done by the project of VideoLand and students who are exactly like uh, students in this university. So of course, um, this is the cone, um, completely idiotic, um, like no one in, in its sane mind would use a cone for a video player. What, what the fuck, like there's absolutely nothing to do with video. But that's exactly a genius move, right? Because like, as it's completely idiotic, it's very easy to recognize. It's a very important brand, and people say, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I go and say, well, I do, I work on VLC, so more or less half of the people understand it, and the other, they're not 
like, no, what is VLC? Yeah, yeah, the cone that plays video. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, I have that on my computer. Uh, and, of course, there was no design, there was no big uh, brainstorming, there was just students who were stupid and played with cones. Uh, and it stays. Why was VLC popular? One of the main reasons is that in 2001, in 2003, 5, you were not, of course, downloading stuff on eDonkey, Casa, Emule, and so on, right? Because that would be very bad, and you shouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> but you did, right? And then you had, every file you were playing, say, well, I don't have this codec, you cannot play it. And you were just like, downing codec packs, half of them were filed with viruses and adware and so on. But the more you, it of course never worked correctly, so you added a new codec pack, and it was destroying the previous codec pack, so you had no video on your laptop. Um, and of course, it was Windows age, so after you installed five codec packs, you had to reinstall Windows. Uh, <laughs> so VLC, because it was done on Linux, arrived with their old codecs, right? And so it was like, a lot of people like it, because in VLC, either a file plays or it doesn't. You can install any other add-ons, it won't work, because we come with our own codec. It's also popular, not because it plays everything, but because it runs everywhere. The last version of VLC still run on OS2. Most of you have no idea what OS2 is. There is probably 20, yeah, of course, the people who know to can do. Um, there are probably 20 users in the world still doing that, uh, and one of them is maintaining VLC on this platform, right? Um, it shows that because we are open source and because we have different teams from everywhere, we, VLC is one of the software that is on the most uh, different architecture, more than Firefox, more than Chrome, more than any Apple or Microsoft software. We are everywhere and we run everywhere. We are talking about around 1 million downloads per day. Uh, that's quite large. Um, probably VLC is on the top 10 uh, software used on Windows that is not made by Microsoft and run the same on Apple. Um, I have no idea how many users because I don't spy them. Well, it's called telemetry those days, right? But, um, so I have no idea, right? What I know is how many people go on my website, but as it's open source, other people and download from other websites. Um, and so maybe we have around 400, 500 million users. Your guess is as good as mine. So if you watch the movie, You don't know? Jim Bond. Yes, but which one? <laughs> God. So if you look closely, you see that uh, it's still called Videoland Client, so that's a very old version. And all the numbers, are, the names of the code names of VLC are taken from GoldenEye, um, Jim, Jim Bond's movie, because it was the first DVD that we actually managed to play on VLC. That's why you kept it. Um, so evolution of versions of VLC, the first version on Mac, the first Windows, and that was the main version that was in 2004 when people starting to use actual VLC, and when we moved from 10 million downloads to 100 million downloads. Um, and of course the last version, the, the, the best one, of course, which is the one that plays Ponyers. For a long time, 95% of the development was done by volunteers, by students. Students who were in the second year, probably for you, fourth year of university um, and at the College of Engineering and just hacking on it. And every year there was a new team coming and going on. Um, this is really the actual meaning of open source and, so, op and free software. People who are not basically paid to do that, but do that because they like it and they have fun and so they can show you, watch their movies, or tell their friends to watch their movies. We have now a non-profit, um, but the non-profit I created in 2008, which is very, very late to the, compared to VLC, which was more or less started in 1998, and open source in 2001. Um, and we had to do, have it because of legal, because to have servers, um, but the, the non-profit employs no one. I'm not employed by the non-profit. So the non-profit has no money, but doesn't need much money. However, um, as you can see, we organize every year a conference called Videoland Dev Days. But what's interesting is that, as you see on this uh, picture, most of those people don't work on VLC. 
A lot of them are working on other projects like FFmpeg, X264, other community open source that works on video, and even competitors to VLCs, we invite them because that's how we get a better software. So how do we work? Well, um, we meet twice a year, usually once at FOSDEM, usually once at the Visual and Dev Days. We only use open source software, right? Everything on our stack, everything running on our servers is open source. And by open source, I mean actual open source. Uh, we've been using IRC since forever. So for those who don't know, IRC is like Slack, but in command line. Um, we use um, PHPBB for, for our forum, which is like Facebook, for also for all people. Um, we're moving everything, of course, to, to uh, GitLab lately. Um, but we still use mailing lists, because everything that we do is by default distributed. People, most of them, we don't know who they are, and to be honest, I don't care, right? I don't care if they are 60, they are 20, they are 40, they are male, female, or a dog, right? I don't care, because what I care about is, is your code good enough? Is your code getting my users more happy? Which is the only thing I care about, not because I really like my users. Um, it's more like a, an unhappy user is going to bother me to ask me questions. Hey, can I do that in VLC? Why can't I? So that takes a lot of time in support. So my biggest goal is, of course, to have less support. I'm joking here, of course, but it's important to make our user happy um, for that. The core contributors of VLC is five people. Right? That's extremely slow, extremely small. Um, and it's, it shows that it's doable if you correctly organize and if your code base is sane enough um, to be able to build such a software. But every year we have around 150 people coming and sending patches. Um, and we do that without using GitHub. Amazing, right? But how do we integrate code? The most important is, is your code maintainable? Because you're going to send me a patch, but statistically, in six months, you're gone. Because you're going to say, no, I'm going to stay around in VLC, I love this community, and so on. Well, yeah, no. You're going to change wife, to change um, job, to move to a different town, to have something happen in your life, to, or just to be bored of that, right? So you have something else to do. We have had 80, 800 users, contributors since the beginning, and there's only five to 10 left, right? So statistics, you're not going to stay there, which means that I am going to maintain your code. So we are very, we use, reviews are very drastic. Uh, usually when you send patches, it's, you got between five to 10 rounds of reviews. And it's not because um, I don't like you or because your code is bad, it's because I need to be in the sense that I can maintain that, right? And people don't have a lot of under difficulty understanding why we do that, because there is lots of features in VLC who are completely idiotic, and we're going to see a few ones, and there are some very important features that are not there. And they're just like, yeah, why don't you do that? Every other player has it. And I'm just like, because no one did it correctly. They say, yeah, but you should do it correctly. I'm just like, yeah, you know, it's maybe not as easy, but also, I'm not, there is no like, big vision on where we are going to be. I know what I want, but that doesn't mean that's going to happen. So what you have is I care about the code more than the feature. That's sad, but that's how you manage, we manage to have that with a small team. We have, of course, zero marketing, they're all legal, and of course, the people who code are the one who have the power. So why did VLC become popular? There is we were, of course, lucky at the right time, at the right place, like everyone that is successful. Um, but there are a few things that um, may, technically, that make it very good. The first part is that VLC doesn't exist. Ah, VLC is basically a multimedia framework, and on your VLC that you have, there is around 600 modules. So there is a very small core, we are talking about 80,000 lines of code in C, that's not that big. Um, but most of it, the millions of lines of code is in different modules on, and other libraries that are open source. So because of that, um, if you want to work on a new feature, you're just going to work on a module. You want to add a new codec, you add a new module. You want a new filter, you add a new module. When I started working on VLC, it took me five years to be able to modify something inside the core. 
And that's, the reasons why they did that was because they wanted to have faster compilation. <laughs> so absolutely not because of a grand design or so on. Um, but what that, ma that managed is, was make it, it easy to port to a different platform. Right, the people on OS2, they have like two modules that are specific to OS2 and everything else is not. When I need to port to a new codec, I just add something. And that's how we have a lot of contributors because we have a very simple API and a lot of extendability. So the second part is because they use C. Um, at this time, a lot of people said, well, you're stupid, you should move to C++. Um, of course, today that's a very weird discussion because you were going to ask whether you should put it in Rust or in, uh, in, in Go. But the C is a very stupid but very simple language. It's the best way to shoot yourself in the foot, true. Um, but because it's very constrained, it's easy to be portable. C++ compilers were very, very slow, but also they were not working on the same, day, the same way on all the platforms. And even today, where you got C++ 14, 17, 2001, uh, they are all different. C was very simple, and what also it forced them to have a very limited um, way uh, of coding. So let's see just about that. One of the reasons VLC was popular also is because it's done to play video on the network. What happened on the network? Well, the video is basically destroyed. It can be broken, right? So because of that, when you were, of course, downloading stuff over CASA, which, of course, none of you did because that was very bad, you were downloading for 24 hours on your 56K model, right? And at the end, after 24 hours, hoping that your mom did not hang the phone because then you would trash your connection and you would lose your download, you realize that, that the Disney movie you were, watch, you were downloading was, of course, not the Disney movie, but a James Bond movie, or the other way around, right? Um, or some adult movie, right? Which is like not exactly what you wanted. Um, and so VLC was able, after a few minutes of download, after one hour, to just watch, because VLC was built for resiliency because it was done for player on the network. Stupid feature in VLC. Um, we support uh, remote control and VNC inside VLC. So on your left, you can see a virtual box. And on the right, it's a VLC. It does actually work. Um, why? I don't know. Because um, we support screencasting, which is absolutely useless, except to do some kind of mise en abyme, which gives you extra karma on Hacker News or Reddit every two years when someone re re receives that. Uh, you can do mosaic. You can do split of walls. Um, we support MIDI and karaoke. You, of course, we have a console mode where you can basically control everything from your console, but there is a video. Yeah, but the video, it doesn't go through the console where you're on a server through SSH. Well, yes, it does. Uh, <laughs> and that actually asks you out. All of those are features that were coded over the years, and I've never touched them, and they never break because they are just modules that a student, a teacher, or someone actually contributed. Okay, um, so we have versions, of course, on Android, uh, on the Apple Watch, um, completely useless. No one is going to watch a movie on the Apple Watch, and you can't get that to the store. Uh, but, well, you can do it, so ha we, we, we had to do it, right? Um, versions, of course, on Apple TVs and Tizen, or whoever cares still about that thing. Um, so just to give you an idea of the numbers of, for example, VLC on 3.0, we're talking about 20,000 commits, right, more or less, and three to 400 for the UIs on each platform. Um, and that gives you the, and that's a, a, around two, two years. So still VLC is a large uh, project in terms of commit and activity. We did a lot of stuff to, to get uh, support for hardware decoding and 10 bits and HDR, everything that you don't care that much. But people ask me often, well, what's next for VLC? Well, there is always new codecs. There is always video. There is always more resolution. We have to support that. We support VR. Um, it was, people cared about it three years ago. They're probably going to care a bit in two years again. Um, <laughs> 
anyway. So I'm just going to show you this real slide. And as all of you realize, this is Maya Lagam, of course, right? Everyone of you can read that. Uh, it's, oops. It's a very difficult language uh, because it has all those diacritic critics. You put three or five letters and then they be become like one letter becomes one. Like you can see here, right? Or, or here. So why do I talk to you about that? Because none of you care about Magalagam, and I know that. Four years ago, there is a guy who tells me, well, hello, I'm in Aleppo East. Okay. Uh, I'm bored. I got two hours of electricity of an internet per day. Um, can you give me a task? I'm just like, are you not in the middle of the hor most horrible war at the moment? He said, yeah, yeah, but still, give me something. So I say, well, maybe you speak Arabic, so you, we have a bug on subtitles, and can you fix that? He says, yeah, I need to go. No news for three months, like usual. He comes back three months later, the, 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 the patch is perfect, almost perfect, which is like amazing. And then I gave him the next stack, which was like redoing all our Arabic subtitles. And then I asked him to, to, to redo our Hebrew support, I'm just like, are you insane? You're asking a, a guy from Syria to fix Hebrew? No, you're sure he did it. And then he did that. And the guy at the end would ask him, okay, what can I do for you? Like you, you produce and you solve a very difficult issue, which is subtitle. It's way more difficult than you think. And he says, yeah, can I have a at Videolan email? And that's what he cared about. Um, so we're working on the next version of VLC. Um, the most important is that we are changing the way the UI because that's one of the biggest issues we have. Those are the only uh, older uh, screenshots that we have. It's going to improve quite a bit. That's probably what's going to happen on the Mac version. Um, and we also have research project. Um, one of them is completely insane and is VLC.js. So VLC.js, the idea is to be able to take the 15 million lines of code of C and C++ and assembly, right? Because we still write assembly. Um, yes, you know, like today when we write assembly, we're between eight to ten times faster than compilers. So in all the all the time you're here, yeah, you can't beat your compiler. Your compiler is smart enough. That's almost always true, except for two cases. The first one is video games, and the other is video codecs. Um, you can beat the compiler and be eight to ten times faster. But you need to write the assembly by hand. Um, and that's annoying. Anyway, so the idea is to bring um, the same knowledge we have in VLC since forever and to bring that um, on the web. So we are going to compile those 15 million lines of C and C++ and assembly and transfer that to a new technology called WebAssembly, um, which is of course not completely ready. But the idea is that today, when you watch movies on, the, uh, on your web browser, you need to convert it, right? Because the web browsers only care about and support a very tiny format and a very specific format of video. Um, and that's very difficult. But also, like, you don't know what version is going to be supported, what format is going to be supported in two years. A lot of the format that were support, supported by Chrome two years ago are gone now. So you need to have a way that you can still play everything, every format inside the web. So if we manage to get that to not being one at a time slower than the C version, but only two or three times version slower, then that could work. Uh, a second, a second uh, thing we are working on is uh, basically sandboxing VLC. VLC is written in C, and with a lot of libraries done by people who are doing that on their free time, around 2,000, right? So I would guess that the number of security issues in VLC are 10,000, probably, maybe more. It's a very big problem, right? Um, and of course, as soon as you hack your VLC, you got access to all your files, which is of course not important, right? Um, and so there is a way to do that, is basically doing sandboxes, but the way we do sandboxes on iOS and Android is fundamentally broken, because for VLC, I'm going to need 
to have access to low level for audio and video and GPUs, which means that I'm going to punch holes into your sandbox, which means that basically your sandbox is useless. Um, so what the way to do that, and the way we're trying to do is not to put a sandbox above VLC, but multiple sandbox inside VLC. And, and so far, no one has done that except Chrome, and Chrome has to manage five megabytes web page, right? Um, we have to care about hundreds of megabits per second for hours, so it's a bit more tricky. But we're working on that, um, and uh, we're modifying, actually, the Linux kernel to be able to support that on Linux. So um, I have one minute left, uh, plus a question, so thank you very much, and ask questions. Please ask question, I don't eat people. Well, only young girls, and that's fine. Over here. Thanks for the great presentation. Um, I, I was pretty amazed by the fact that you um, describe VLC as a pretty decentralized project with no, you said, no clear vision or direction and no central decision maker. And from our perspective, I think VLC can probably be described as like a 150-year-old family-owned company where it kind of still works. I mean, it's pretty amazing that you're still around, that you're still so successful. Um, and and I'm, I'm really wondering now if I compare that to, I'm more from the capitalist world, you know, where venture capital and all of that, and people are like, okay, you want to develop a product, talk to your users and designers, and think about your user experience, na 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 na. Everything is super directed, and there's nothing about decentralization and that sort of decentral governance, really. So I'm asking me, um, have you thought about why you are still around and why you were so successful when you're really not at all applying these, it sounded to me a bit like these, you know, very directed best practices of decision making, talking to users, and so on and so on. Um, so, one of the reasons is that we have absolutely no bullshit, right? Um, we have no meetings, we don't spend time on meetings. And, and like, the biggest goal for us is to make our user happy. And I was joking about the support, but not that much, right? Because a happy user is basically less time for me, right? For example, we try to fight against our users multiple times by not putting the features they were asking. And at some times, just saying that, no, we don't support that, took more time than basically just coding it. The difference also is that um, if you see like a lot of projects, um, if you say to a, a group, well, you got three months, and they're going to take the whole three months, right? And if you get the same team, make it twice bigger, and you say one month, one year and a half, they're going to use the same one year and a half, right? Because then when you are very resource constraints, you do decisions and you take them quickly, right? In big organizations, the decisions take so much time because you have money, because you have time, right? Uh, the whole agile thingy, which is basically stuff that we were doing in open source since forever, just written them down. It's just like, we need to take decisions fast and we have no choice because we don't have the money to do anything else, right? Um, the main video line infrastructure is three servers. Three servers, right? We're talking about 10 million views, which means that we were doing a static website that we have written in PHP and compile it as a static website since 2005, right? And now, since two or three years, people re rediscover static websites. It's just like, we had to do it because we were resource constraints, and that's how we did it. About the, the product part is that um, some people, and especially me, has spent a lot of time to listen out to our users, right? So I know where I want to be, but because I don't have deadlines, I don't have marketing, I'm only going to push stuff that they want. Um, of course, it's not the way you get money, right? Often I say that VLC is the most popular European software with Spotify, but also the less profitable, right? Because zero divided by 500 million is really not much, right? Um, so yeah, more or less. Thank you. 
Any other question? Uh, hello. Uh, so, uh, as an iOS developer, I like to learn uh, how can I contribute to VLC. Just go to GitHub page and uh, search for starter tasks or... Okay, the best way to start contributing to VLC is to actually use it. And the second thing is to actually report bugs. How many times do I get to people say, oh, you know, there is this issue with this file since two versions on VLC? I'm just like, no, of course, I don't know. I support millions of formats. I say, oh, but I thought that you knew. Like, no, how do I know, right? Um, so that's the first way. And then if you want to actually go a bit more involved, you can code, you can design, you can do the support. Um, and if you know how to code, it's very easy to add a feature to VLC. Everything is documented, and because everything is modules, it's the, the biggest modules are two or 3,000 lines of code. So any decent student is able to do that. So, uh, and everything is documented on the wiki, on the GitHub page. You just go there, you do pull requests, it just works. Okay, so I need to think about the new feature that I want to implement first. No? No? No. I can fix some bug fixes also? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Most people say, oh, I don't like that in VLC. If you start working on a big project, then you, it's better to ask the team. But, okay, I think we have a question, time for the last question. Uh, thank you for the presentation. So you said before you don't, you don't know how many people use VLC, you don't spy on users. So you never had that temptation to add like any analytics platform so that you know uh, or you, like how many users are using this feature, how many people are clicking that button. And, and one other question is like, uh, I imagine you have a lot of users asking for new features and complaints and how do you cope with I imagine you get like hundreds of requests per day. Okay, so the number of features and people interacting with us is ridiculously small. We are talking about maybe 5,000 people per year. So compared to the numbers we have, it's almost nothing, right? And even that is big, and I'm happy that they don't, because else I wouldn't manage that. Um, about the numbers on Android Store or Apple Store, it's easy to know the numbers, but on Windows and Mac OS, we just know how many people go on our website. But we also see other websites, and we see the updates. How many people update? But most of people don't update, although. So that's only why we can have a, an idea, right? And, and then we have lots of users on Linux, and Linux numbers are very difficult to get. So that's how. Uh, I'm still around after the break. If you have any other questions, thank you very much. Thank you.